Listen everybody To the words I have to say Better get ready Because the Lord is coming one day Thank you for tuning in to the Prophet Daniel's Report. This is Daniel White IV, the eldest son of Daniel White III. The intro music that you just heard is my late grandfather, Daniel White Jr., singing a song titled Get Ready. Today, my father, Daniel White III, is going to share with you news and information relating to biblical prophecy so that you can be prepared for the second coming of Jesus Christ. Daniel White III is the national best-selling author of over 20 books, including Just Jesus and The Prayer Motivator. He has spoken in meetings across the United States and in 23 foreign countries, and is the president of Gospelite Society and Torch Ministries International. Now, here's your host, Daniel White III. Welcome to the Prophet Daniel's Report. This is report number 271. My name is Daniel White III, here to remind you that the Lord Jesus Christ is coming back one day soon and that you need to be prepared. This broadcast is not about predictions, nor is it about setting dates as some foolishly have done in the past. However, it is all about preparation. First today, let's look at some signs of his coming in the news. The disciples asked the Lord Jesus Christ in Matthew 24, 3, What shall be the sign of thy coming and of the end of the world? Jesus Christ then went on to give them and us clear signs that show us when we can begin to expect to see the coming of the Lord and the end of the world as we know it. Looking at world events through the lens of the Word of God, let's look at some headlines from today's news that point to the second coming of the Lord Jesus Christ. First up today, according to Reuters, a Pentagon spy agency concluded for the first time that North Korea likely has the ability to launch nuclear armed missiles, illustrating the high stakes surrounding the escalating tensions on the Korean Peninsula. A study dated last month by the Pentagon's Defense Intelligence Agency reckoned with moderate confidence that North Korea is able to launch nuclear-armed ballistic missiles, but the weapons would probably be unreliable. The secret assessment, which was mistakenly marked as unclassified, was made public by Representative Doug Lamborn as he questioned senior Pentagon officials about North Korea's nuclear weapons program. Second today, according to Reuters, three people were killed and several others injured after severe weather caused power outages and damaged buildings in Mississippi and other areas. A tornado also struck, destroying uh, mobile homes, uprooting trees, and overturning an 18-wheel uh, tractor-trailer. The severe weather followed a storm that spawned hail, driving rain, and a possible tornado as it roared through parts of Missouri and Arkansas overnight, leaving a trail of damage in its wake as a broader storm system stretched from Texas to the northeast. Third today, according to the Times of Israel, the Bible ascribes the diversity of languages on earth, some 6,500 tongues, in current use to the hubris of post-flood mankind in seeking to build a tower to heaven and a divine decision to punish that tower of Babel construction 
project by confounding man's capacity to communicate in a single tongue. Now an Israeli startup claims to be perfecting the best means of overcoming that biblical curse of global language barriers. Ike Saji, the CEO of Lexaphone, said, Our vision is to allow two people anywhere in the world to communicate and understand each other, no matter their language and no matter the medium, phone, internet, or face-to-face. We believe that our product is the harbinger of this revolution. Lexiphone currently lets you speak to anyone in English, French, Spanish, Italian, Portuguese, German, Russian, and Mandarin. The person on the other end will hear what you say in their own language. Talk about speaking in tongues. Ladies and gentlemen, the Bible says in Jude one twenty one, Keep yourselves in the love of God, looking for the mercy of our Lord Jesus Christ unto eternal life. You can read these stories in more detail and get more Second Coming related news on our website at secondcomingherald.com. Now it is time for Prophecy Boot Camp. Prophecy Boot Camp is where we deal with the basics of prophecy, the second coming of the Lord Jesus Christ, and what will happen in the future according to the Bible, the Word of God. Our aim here is not to make predictions, but to help you get prepared by understanding how things will unfold in the end times. Our topic for today is titled, The Earthly Kingdom of Jesus Christ, Part 1, from Dr. John MacArthur's fine book, The Second Coming of the Lord Jesus Christ, which is basically a Bible study. He has other fuller books on the subject. From the remotest point of antiquity, men have longed for and talked about the possibility of a utopia, an age in which righteousness and peace would prevail and oppression and war would cease. Poets write about it, folk singers sing about it, politicians promise it, prophets forecast it, and the world cries out for it. But nobody ever brings it. If you study the Bible, however, you will find that God promises to bring a utopia, a kingdom, beyond what men have ever dreamed of. And on the record of past performance, we can believe what God says. There is coming an earthly kingdom, and the king's name is Jesus Christ. Now, this particular age of blessedness is not just hinted at in the Bible. It is, in many ways, the theme of the Bible. This particular kingdom, the thousand-year earthly reign of Christ, comes under various titles, For example, it's called the regeneration, the times of refreshing, the times of restitution, the day of Jesus Christ, the fullness of times. Christ's thousand-year reign on earth will be the utopia that the world has been looking for. Ladies and gentlemen, we will continue looking at this topic in our next broadcast, if the Lord should tarry his coming, and if we live. Now, in closing, let's consider what God wants you and I to do in light of his second coming, for the Lord will come back. Jesus Christ said in Luke 19:13, to occupy till I come. Please listen to the following from Charles H. Spurgeon's sermon titled, Joyful Anticipation of the Second Advent. He said, Luke 21, 28 through 31 finishes with a parable to encourage us to obey the precept. Behold the fig tree and all the trees. When they are budding, you see and know for yourselves that summer is near. Notice the signs mentioned in this parable. Summer is the time of the bursting of buds. 
the unfolding of flowers, the forming and ripening of the fruit. There may come many a shower in the spring, but that will not hinder the arrival of summer. It will rather help summer to come. It may be cold and chill beneath the black cloud that hovers over us for a while, but that will not hinder summer. All these things are the tokens of the summer's coming. So brothers and sisters, when you are in trouble, expect that you are going to have a blessing. When you are passing through a great trial, look out, for there is another sign that summer is coming. Do not fear to look up and lift up your heads, for the clouds you so much dread are big with mercy and shall break in blessings on your head. Holy Father God, we praise you and we thank you for that good word. We praise you and we thank you for the fact that one day you will come back uh, to get us. Lord, help us to live for you in these last and evil days. In Jesus Christ's name we pray and for his sake. Amen. Amen.